Deborah Gary. I own the Color Book Gallery, which is a multicultural children's bookstore here in Germantown, Mount Airy section of Philadelphia. Color Book Gallery is a multicultural children's bookstore. We focus on books for with characters of color, and our age range is primarily birth through age 12. Um, we also carry educational items as well for those children. We try to uh, highlight some of the bilingual books that are available in many languages since the communities now are very diverse. So those are primarily our specialties. Again, educational, cultural, characters of color, and for our younger children. So today we'll be talking about one of our exhibits. We do put up exhibits periodically. We do educational programs and events, which again are uh, primarily African American history exhibits. So we right now have an African American in the Revolutionary War exhibit um, up in the, in the rear of the store. We put that together to coincide with the uh, Revolutionary Festival Battle of Germantown reenactment that happens every year on the first Saturday in October. So we wanted to highlight uh, the fact that they were both actually uh, African Americans that also fought in all the wars, even as far back as the Revolutionary War. So uh, you'll learn a little bit about that when you see our exhibit. I've got a great stuff in here. I'm, I'm loving these learning mats. I'm thinking I'm going to purchase quite a few for my grandson because I believe education starts at home. Do you get a lot of educators here or is it mainly parents? Right, so uh, we get a mix of customers that come through, so definitely we get walk, walk in, you know, from the community, which would be parents and, you know, grandparents, and definitely uh, educators are always are a good customer, um, since, you know, unfortunately with, you know, the low budgets in most schools, there's always teachers that supplement their own classrooms. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I, I always get teachers coming through and I do, you know, offer a, a discount for all educators. And then I actually have over here in the corner, I have a recycle bin and re you can swap them for anything over here or they're either 50 cent or a dollar, you know, like I said, and that helps as well, you know, sometimes, you know, it's easier to get several books, you know, when you can afford them. Mm -hmm. as opposed to the cost of maybe some of the newer hardback books cost quite a bit, but you could get a hardback over here for a dollar versus the sixteen ninety nine that it would be if it was new. So again, as I say, um, we really don't carry toys per se, but uh, try to carry primarily educational items. You might have a toy mixed in here and there, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I primarily try to carry educational items. Um, and uh, so, do you write books? Are you an author? I author? have, you know, just like everybody, did have tried to. I have not published, so I have several books um, that are already written up. I just haven't published them. They were on my list of things to do. Um, and some of them go from children up to um, educational level books that might be for adults since I also do educational workshops and seminars. Okay. And yeah. then I've seen on your door you do SEPTA perks too. So how does that work? Right. Uh, the SEPTA perk pass program is, is something of course you know SEPTA initiated that if businesses agree to participate if someone comes in and shows their SEPTA pass then we give them whatever discount it is that we designated and I have said that you know they get 10% discount if they you know flash their SEPTA pass oh, that's you so know cool. so um, apparently you, you can go out to the SEPTA website and see what are the participating businesses you know and mm -hmm. um, what it is that we're offering we're highlighting African Americans in the Revolutionary War uh, I think most people, you know, still maybe think that we didn't participate in a lot of things, you know, that maybe it's only been recent that we've been more involved in wars, but actually African Americans have fought in every war that this nation has uh, gone through. It's just that probably in history class you may have only heard as far as our involvement in the Revolutionary War, you might have heard a little bit about Christmas Addicts you know, as being the first person that was shot and killed. But you might not have heard 
much more about uh, people in uh, African Americans in the Revolutionary War. But again, we actually had somewhere about three to five thousand people of color fight for the Americans. Uh, and then we also had another seven or more thousand fight on the British side. Remember that war was between the Americans trying to gain their independence from Britain at that time. Um, but there was actually a couple other wars going on at the same time. That, that part of the nation, we were, we were being occupied by British and then in the south by the Spanish. So, you know, down here in Florida, you had African Americans fighting with the Span Spaniards against the British. One over in Louisiana, when just the French was occupying, you know, it was like everybody was occupying, and they all were using us to help them fight their battles, as well as promising us, you know, because uh, at that time we were already slaves. There was always some free blacks, but we were always still slaves, promising us freedom if we would fight to help them win their battle. You know, so we fought on both sides. And with, again, the promise of freedom, the promise was not kept in, you know, 100% of the time. It, does, it was in some of the cases that there were some blacks that did gain their freedom. We do, on this block, uh, well, in the next block, they do the Battle of Germantown reenactment every year, which is a Revolutionary War battle where the American troops were fighting the British and the Americans lost. You know, so there's typically Ned Hector, um, reenactor in that battle, um, representing the, um, you know, African American that was in the battle. So we wanted this year in, in, at least in our block here, the 6300 Alliance, Business Alliance, we wanted to show some more um, involvement of what happened with the African Americans during the, the American Revolution, since there are a lot of people that come every year to see that reenactment. So this was my attempt to put something together real quick, you know, but in our block will probably expand upon um, highlighting the African American contribution. And as I said, I, I do exhibits anyway, so it was good to, to do a little bit more research and get some more information. Telling my mom and them, I said, this might be one of our ancestors here, George Middleton, because I am a McCoy slash Middleton slash Payne slash everything else. And, and so on my grandmother's side, she's a Middleton and George Middleton was the commander of, there was an all-black troop on each side. There was several, you know, what one was called the Bucks of America out of uh, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and George Middleton was their captain of the Bucks of America. Now, the, the uh, black troop that fought for the British, one of them was called the Ethiopian Regiment. During the Revolutionary War, it continued to happen during the Civil War that unfortunately there's always one of them, you know, I don't want to call them them house people mm -hmm. that will revolt, that will tell, <laughs> I'll just say tattletale type of thing. So we had a couple of times when we had um, slaves that were trying to, you know, get everybody together so that they could revolt because the slavery, of course, was a bad thing. Well, and several cases. Um, you have both Gabriel Prosser as well as Denmark Vesey. You might have heard of Denmark Vesey. Both in those cases, they were slave insurrection, I guess you call it insurrectionists, but they were trying to gather our people together so that we could revolt against slavery. And in both cases, one of us, you know, told the master and in both cases, Gabriel and Denmark then was both captured and hung. Washington Crossing, the Delaware, that there is a black man in the picture. You know, which you'll see him way over here with the little hat, um, sitting right here behind the uh, rowing. Further research of this picture uh, and talking, there's, there's always been this, um, finally I guess some historians have concluded that this picture was a depiction of the crossing, but not a reality of the actual crossing because Washington crossed in the middle of the night by 3 a.m. or something like that. 
and, and because of the conditions of the waves and the ice or whatever, he couldn't have been standing in the boat, and that the boats that were um, being used at that time were not that shape, and that the flag is not the correct flag, so that this is really an artistic a representation of Washington and his theories, as well as the people in the boat. So they say you, if you look at the people in the boat, that there's a representation of different cultures, and perhaps even one of them might be a woman. You know, so that uh, I understand that there is actually another artistic representation that's supposedly more realistic. But I don't know if anybody knows for real whether there was a uh, a black person in the boat. But there are some, um, you know, true stories of the fact that there were some um, aides to Washington that were always with him, you know. So there could have been, you know, an African American in the boat because they were like always with Washington and no matter where he went or some of the other um, whites that were with Washington also had their people always with them, so there could possibly have been one of the boats. The Jocko story is a good story. I don't know if everybody knows that true story. You know, you see these lawn jockeys everywhere, but that is actually a true story. Now, I have found that out several years ago from a children's book. You know, so I ran into an author uh, while I was down at my Virginia store at an event selling his children's book and I have it somewhere and it's about this story and then once you research it's a true story that in reality as Washington crossed the Delaware he had left his horses on the other side and had had asked or either this young boy had volunteered little young slave boy volunteered to hold the horses until he came back by the time Washington got back the little boy has, was still holding these horses' straps and had froze to death. This is really a representation of that little boy holding the straps of those horses. Now, and Washington was so impressed that by the time he got back to Virginia, because remember Washington lived both down at Mount Vernon as well as he stayed up here in Philadelphia. So by the time he got back to Virginia, he, you know, wrote something up and you know he just wrote something to designate how impressed he was about this little young boy who had lost his life. So from there came that statue of the lawn jockey. Now the slaves then decided to use the statue because you would then start seeing these statues even back during that time starting it to appear. So the slaves actually used the statue as well to give um, Underground Railroad signals. If it had a green ribbon tied to the arms of the statue, that would indicate safety. A red, rim, red ribbon said, keep going, you know, this is not a safe place, you know. So there was like all kinds of things that we had to use, you know, during slavery on the Underground Railroad.